And this moment's upcoming seventh studio album is titled Mother, out March 27th. And here to talk to us about it is their beautiful and talented front woman, the one and only Maria Brink. Thank you so much for your time, Maria. Always appreciated. Oh, thank you so much for this interview. I'm happy to be here with you. Thanks, Stalin. All right, we are going to jump right in and talk about the new song, which I love so good, The In-Between. Thank you. Yeah, it's like heavy and sexy and beautiful in that way that only an In This Moment song can be. It references (laughs) older material, right? So you reference blood, whore, beautiful tragedy, sick like me. Would you care to shed any amount of light on why you chose to reference those songs in particular? I think that when I went to go and do this particular song, we were pretty much almost done with our album. Actually, we thought we were done. And then they wanted one more song from us. And they were like, you know, we love what you have and it's perfect. But our main guy that we work with all the time He's like, you know, I just got to push it a little bit more. I just need something a little bit more. He wanted something a little more like visceral and real. And and where I was in my life at the time, I was feeling all of that. And so for me, it's like, okay, I'd be a little bit more artistic and let it out just as much as I can. And, you know, we can all be happy. So we went into the studio to do it again. So the song ended up being about kind of where I was, everyone, we all have this thing, right, where we're torn with the, the, the light and the dark or the good and the bad or the, you know, this, these things. And this place I was like when kind of finding my strengths and, and myself and them wanting more from me. I was like just pulling everything out. And, and because songs like Whore and Blood, they're our favorite songs. So sometimes we hear from people, you know, when are you going to write another one like that? And you can't write the same song over and over, you know, you don't want to because it makes that other song less special. And, you know, you can't just keep doing the same thing. So it was me kind of like saying, is this what you want from me? Is this what can, will please you, you know, type of thing? Like, is this what everyone really wants type thing? And I'm so glad we did it because it winded up being our favorite song. So because he inspired us to push ourselves a bit harder, because I got really raw with it, I think, with my soul and everything, we ended up doing our most favorite thing. And we all knew, right, this is our favorite. So mm. sometimes you got to push yourself just a, just a little bit harder and you might get that magic to happen. Nice. Yeah. So that's knowing that, knowing you, like it wasn't really surprising because we all know Maria Brink, the creative force behind In This Moment on all levels, right? And what I was told is that you really wanted the in-between to be put out first. And for those who are unfamiliar, a yeah. lot of the times bands don't really decide Sometimes they do, but for the most part, they leave it up to, you know, the powers that be. We made the art. Now you distribute it how you choose. So you just knew immediately once it was done, like this was it. I think everybody knew, like our label and our management and all of the whole team. I think we all knew that that one was um, the, the one. It just really made sense to come out with a swing and we have some other really special songs in here. I'm sure you'll talk about, you know, with special guests that Mm -hmm. we wanted, but we didn't, it's like, you want to come out with that first, but we, we felt like we should just wait on that for a little bit and come out really hard and and visceral and truthful. I just wanted to like get people to hear what we're doing and creating. And I'm actually really lucky because you're right. Some people just kind of do the songs or whatever. And then people, have to direct them on where they should go, maybe visually artistic with everything. And that's okay too. You know, not everybody obsesses the way I do. There's really no (laughs) right or wrong, but I am personally very passionate about all of the, 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 album artwork and how it's laid out and picking our photographers and directing the videos. I love that, but I work with the best team because they just let us be me. Our label Atlantic, he is our main guy. I mean, he is like, he lets us just be our artists and he is just so kind and lets us be free so, and our managers. So we're really lucky with our team. Yeah, you really are. That's special. It's it's not every yeah. man who gets to do that. So, of course, we all know that your fans call you Mother Maria. I found it interesting, though, that the <laughs> first song that the band releases off the upcoming album that we were just talking about starts with a lyric about your mother, actually, and then your father. Yeah. I'm just going to read a, a couple of quick lines. My mother said I was holy. My father said I would burn. My mother said I was an angel. My father said that I would turn. I'm a lyrics person, so I always wonder, uh, is there truth to the lyrics? Is this a peek into your childhood? Right. 
I mean, my mom, it was just the angel. My mother is like, she had me as a very young girl. She is just sacred to me and so beautiful and special. And she always believed in me. She was always there for me. And I'm so grateful to just have this beautiful, beautiful mother that I have. And my that my father just wasn't uh, in my life, you know, and he had other things. And, and I, I, I don't hate him. I, you know, it's not like I'm somebody that's like, you know, screw him. <laughs> you know, I think he's a good man. He just didn't. You know, everyone has their lives and their past for whatever reasons, and he just wasn't, you know, in my life. So it, I felt really abandoned from that for a long time, and 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 then was hurt by some father figures after that. So I had some issues for a long time, but I'm kind of to a point now where I I don't cry over it. I wish him happy and love, and I think everything happens for a reason. Like I'm exactly who I'm supposed to be, and I had to experience everything that I've experienced in life to have this truth that I can speak or to have other people inspire me and then I can inspire other people, you know? So I think that it all happens for a reason. I'm not somebody that sits in the victim, in the victim mode. No, don't get that from you at all. Never have. Okay. <laughs> you co-directed the video, which very much looks like a Maria Brink piece of art, right? So talk to me about the symbolism behind the red hands. We see them in the video. The album's artwork also has the entire band's hands painted in red, which of course we all have blood on our hands comes to mind immediately but how does that tie into like the bigger theme the bigger picture of it all I think that me and Robert Clay his name is he directed this with me as well he does all my videos with me he's just kind of a quiet guy who hides doesn't really talk about it but he's a really talented visual person and what I can do is kind of come up with the concept of the video and break down all the scenes and like what I want him to be and then I can kind of really he works with me to trust him to like make sure that that comes to life you know, with, on the screen as well, and we work together. Like I said, I'm a really visual person, so we, even when we're, like, writing songs sometimes and we're singing them, like, while I'm listening to it, I'm, like, seeing kind of what the video would be or the colors that I feel with it or, like, maybe live, I'll envision, like, oh, I should be, like, really tall and I could see it, like, you know, so I'm just a super visualizing obsessive person when it comes to that stuff so I just kind of was trying to find different inspirations and things and kept having this heaven and hell and that feeling torn between all of those things and and what that means and you know learning you know you have to have the darkness to balance the light or it's not even light you know it's like a so just learning all these things I don't know they I wanted that to come visually to the art and the red hands yes of course it makes you think of like blood on the hands or sinner or whatever but it's it's just also very striking and it kind of was like them trying to take me over like when the red or the whatever tries to take you over. So that's what the hands are supposed to symbolize when they like eat my face in. <laughs> so that's what, that's what they were. They're trying to like take me away. But me learning to kind of not be afraid of that, but necessarily find a way to balance that and use it in a strength, whether that be when I'm on stage and I just have to let out all the rage or whatever, you know, just finding the right ways, I think, to let it out for all of us. Some people have the gym, some people drive fast cars. I mean, I don't know, but that's a great place for me to let out darkness or rage or things. Cause in everyday life, I'm really sweet and loving giving person. So I, it's like my balance. Have you found that people who don't know you as a person and only see your videos and your art and your music completely misinterpret who you are as a human? Oh my God. Well, they, they all think I'm a Satanist and I got people chained up in my basement and I may be affiliated with the Illuminati. Totally. <laughs> so, always I with mean, the pyramids. You see it all. I mean, there's videos of people basically dissecting the video on how it's evil and how there's six hands around my head. You know, I mean, really just people come up with whatever their perception of me is. And I guess that's what art is, whether or not you're making a movie or you're painting a painting or, you know, whatever it is, the whole point, that's my expression and my perception. And everyone just takes it in all these different ways of who they think I am and what I am. And I'm actually a really private person, really withdrawn. I don't even do a lot of interviews anymore, no. uh, very rarely. So uh, that's why I'm a little awkward, right? <laughs> no, awkward, thank but... you. Thank you. You're awesome. No, okay, good. <laughs> 
But I think, yeah, people think they know who I am, but they don't. They don't know. Some people know. And some people may feel sides of me, you know, through my music. You can feel my soul or my truth, and I put it in there. But everyone's different, and everyone has a different perception depending on where they are in life. So everyone just takes it how they are, and then they, they mold all these ideas of who I am and what I am. But, you know, mystery is great, and that's what art is. And I think when you can leave your imagination to go, it's good. I just don't like it if it's super bad because, you know, I – I'm a loving person and I love everybody and human beings and, and I do have a darkness to me, but I would never, you know, do bad things or wish bad things on people or hurt anything or anyone, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, I pray, we pray before every single show. Nobody probably thinks that we hold hands in a circle and we pray to whoever's in that circle, whoever they want to pray to. And we thank the universe and we thank God and for the blessings that we have in our life and, and to be there and have that opportunity. So they still think I got people in the basement chained <laughs> up. <laughs> well, I will say I've been around you in person on several occasions and you can feel the light. You know, you can feel that positive thing kind of radiating through you. Not Good. That, yeah. I want to lift anything help people lift up and and you know my message at the end of the day is always love and is always a light at the end of the tunnel but sometimes you gotta go in hell and experience hell and, and feel that it's yeah. just, you know and sometimes life happens just yep. to appreciate how beautiful the light is and the heavenly beautiful parts of our life but Aww. even people who are very christian and they think we're so evil i mean if you if you do love jesus i mean jesus loved the sinners you know he went and 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 sat with the sinners and and preached with them and loved them and protected them. So people just get it all twisted up. People just got to say something about something, don't they? It's true. They're bored. They got nothing better to do. It's they all, are. You know who you are. Exactly. So, totally, you do. Sometimes musicians will say uh, their new music is a com- and we kind of kind of touched on this, but sometimes they'll say it's a combination of sounds from previous albums. They can point directly to this one or that one. Sometimes they share that the new music is unlike any thing we've ever heard from the band and since mother isn't actually out i know it's hard to like describe a sound but in terms of sound what would you say i definitely think there is definitely a new element to it i mean it has for me really powerful and really like if you can just tell it's it's the next evolution for us like where we would go to if we were to go to that next step. It's very powerful. And I have these power, I have guest vocals on there. I mean, I know you're going to probably talk that a little bit, but that in itself is just so powerful. Then we have these songs and there's just a, a strength to them. And you, I think you can feel me feeling empowered and us feeling empowered and in the music too. I think there's an empowering element to it, but I hope people like it. I never know. You know, it's so hard to talk about your own art. You can kind of only do it and love it and then just hope everyone gets it you don't know sometimes people love it sometimes they hate it you know all you can do is what you love that's all you can do yeah let's talk about one of those collabs because the track listing is out so we know there's a cover of queens we will rock you on the record Mm -hmm. it features yourself lizzie hale of hailstorm and taylor momsen of the pretty reckless so three powerhouses on one song tell us how that came together and why you chose that song um well i love that song it's just one of the all-time best songs ever i love freddie mercury i love queen they're so awesome and so special and i just thought it, we could get us three women to do like a version of that with us together i just felt like it could be such an empowering thing and i think they're both just so talented and so unique and different in their own ways and thought if all three of us could like join our powers <laughs> I love, like how, what a special moment would it be to also show our fans especially our woman fans you know that we come to, we don't tear each other down or belittle each other um because we're all in the same business we, if anything we come together and we lift each other up and it just it felt like it could be a really beautiful kind of powerful statement like that yeah you've definitely shown that with the touring with the ladies before and and now with this song i'm dying to hear yeah. that song i cannot wait to hear the <laughs> song it sounds so good i hope you like it uh, they sound amazing it's, and it's really special and it's, you can't it's go good. wrong you can't go wrong with with those and Lizzie's, Lizzie's actually doing the uh, guitar solo in it too. 
Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Looking forward to that. There's also yeah. a song on the record titled Hunting Grounds. That's featuring yep. Joe Catella of Dead. So I know that in this moment yeah. are taking Dead with them out on the spring tour along with Black yeah. Brides and Raven Black. But what's your relationship with Joe? I mean, it's going to make for a great collab on stage, but what's what's the history there with him? Um, he's very dear to my heart. We're very close and he has such a beautiful voice. I can't wait for everyone to hear their new album coming out. It's like they jumped like a, like it is his voice on it too. He, I know he's a great screamer and everyone hears that. and He's like strong. He's got that powerful, but he actually has the singing voice as like insane. And so I asked him, would he share his beautiful voice with me? Um, on this song and it's like a side of him that no one is going to think they're going to hear and the way that we're singing it's very interesting especially in the verses it's a very powerful song and it's an honor to have him on there with me he's a beautiful human being very very cool uh, another thing you have coming up you are a busy woman and this is just a couple days away you're doing ship rocked again i know you've done it before but this time you're doing it solo style so you're performing your first ever is described as a solo lounge act for music lovers. So maybe elaborate a little bit on that. And what's your favorite song to play on piano? Ship Rock named it like that. I didn't say that, but I freaking love Ship Rock. Yeah, I didn't write that out. That was like the way that they kind of said it. Um, they're just we're friends with the guys who put it on. They're good guys. And it's, it's a good time to just kind of escape and it's about music floating out on the ocean and it's really really beautiful um and so I just said this year maybe I it's my first time doing a solo thing and it'll just be me on piano um and I always played piano like I never really focused on getting really really good at it. I just play because I love it and it makes me feel good I'm just not I just do it like I never had a piano lesson or anything like that same with singing I guess I never had a singing lesson but just makes me feel good and it's just this other side of me that I think nobody gets to see and again I'm shy so I'm I'm, I'm nervous to do this it's so funny because I go in front of like 100,000 people in these some of these festivals and I am not afraid I am not shy I'm like revved and wild and I like I'm not like oh god I'm scared I'm like do it you know so for me to do this it's stripping away everything the the whole I normally have performers and I change wardrobe almost every song is like a different scene and there's a big light show and my band members and there's fog and confetti I mean there's just everything so this is just me by myself on the piano I am going to have Randy guest play guitar with me maybe on two songs or something like that maybe three songs my guitar player Randy Weitzel will be on the ship so he's going to come in and guest with me I may have a singer guest come up too but it's just the I wanted to do something that was the delicate, intimate, raw side of me with everything stripped away. Hmm. And like, what does that sound like and feel like? And I just wanted to share that with everyone and see how it felt for myself. Like, do I like it? Do I not like it? Maybe I'll do more of it. I don't know, you know? Yeah. It's interesting because as non-performers, we would never understand that, right? To me, it's like, all right, a few people, just me, and then 100,000 people. And But as a performer, it's like the more intimate, the more intimidating sometimes for the performer. It's kind of like backwards a little bit. Yeah, it depends on on who it is, I'm sure, and how they are. But like, mm -hmm. even in everyday life, I'm not good in big public things. I get, I'm just, I'm like, I hide in the corner in the shadow in the restaurant, the whole house with candles, it's dim all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the daytime, I do love when the sunshine comes through. And that is beautiful. But I'm definitely more of like the cat in the shadow type person. So I'm going to keep the stage very moody, though, for it. So I still feel kind of in my element. And I'll, I'll do probably candles all over the stage, but it's just going to be me and my keyboard piano and candles all over the stage yeah. and the delicate side of me. And it's kind of me challenging myself, too, and saying, how can I be powerful without screaming mm -hmm. and without singing really loud, which just stripped all down, like, you know? I got to hear how that goes. So we'll, you have to keep me posted. We'll see. I got to hear it, too. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'll probably mess. I'm going to mess up a few times. And you know what? It's okay if I do. It's all good. It'll be a good time. Uh, yeah. We'll wrap on this okay. this note. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a silly, but on Twitter in this moment asks, what will you be manifesting this year? So I pose the very same question to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I want to manifest happiness and peace. I mean, 
peace, learning how to balance my life because I work, 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 and just making balance for everything. I want to manifest the band growing to a new level uh, and expanding to even something more powerful, more broader. Um, yeah, I want to manifest money. I want to yeah. manifest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to manifest. Um, I'm opening a gallery with my son. I'm really excited about that. Oh my God, tell um, in me. In Albany, New York. Tell me, tell me. Yeah, we're opening up. It's called Etrice Galleries. Um, it's opening up in this this uh, early summer. And it's going to be a really special thing. We're going to f- feature different artists each month. And I think eventually I'm going to do my own collection there. And um, mm-hmm. it's kind of going to be different events that will be held there. So we're really, really excited to, to see that come to life and see what happens with that. It's like a new adventure and stuff. So yeah, there's a lot of things, but most importantly, peace and happiness, love. And health. Can't forget health. That is like top. Yeah. Health. Health. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, many thanks to you, Maria Brink. Mother going to be out March 27th. Just a few days before that, the 24th band going to be hitting the road. Full dates at loudwire.com. You can also pre-order the album there if you wish to. Till next time, lovely lady, and may all your dreams come true. Thank you, sweet love. We'll talk to you soon.